Okay, so we're going to get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Virda. I'm the Employer Programs Manager at Commute.org and wanted to welcome you all to this virtual roundtable. Um, we titled this, Who's Still Teleworking or Not? Uh, once we have a reopen. So we'll be sharing um, a little later about what we found out, at least in your registration data, uh, regarding that question. But for right now, uh, Rebecca, I'm going to have you, um, I'm going to unmute you and have you introduce yourself as well. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Rebecca, and I'm the Employer Programs Representative here at Commute.org. Um, just note that I just posted a call-in number for um, in the webinar chat, so if you need to get that to anyone, it is available in the chat. Oh, you want to make sure uh, it's to all attendees as well. Okay. So just so folks know, we'll have a little orientation to our formatting, but for right now, everybody is muted. Um, and you cannot see each other. So if that is um, of concern or you're just wondering what the format is and um, when I get into the agenda, we'll kind of go into the protocols for sharing and speaking and through what port, which, which Zoom portal you will be communicating. Awesome. So I'm gonna get us into our agenda. So for today as a welcome, um, we're gonna talk about, um, well, we're gonna give you a chance to uh, introduce each other, introduce yourselves to one another via chat, and also uh, talk about some telework considerations that we were internally considering here at commute.org and how those were, at least for us, the starting point for this conversation. Then we're gonna talk about uh, what we learned in your registration data and that, um, you know, there are about, 55 people on this webinar right now. We had about 80 people register, and so the data will reflect all of those 80, 80 people and about you know 75-ish employers that are represented in that group. Then we're gonna have uh, some polling to get further into what we already learned in your registrant data, but get into some polling of this group because it is such a large group. Um, what is included in your reopen plans? What are kind of some of the, the, the first cut of details that you can share on mass in this call. And then finally, we'll close with some discussion questions um, in, in terms of what would be useful uh, for this group. Okay, so next. Next, uh, we'd like you to get familiar with your chat. I'm sure a lot of you are on Zoom, have been on Zoom for these past few months already. But what we'd like you to do is uh, in the chat, you wanna first make sure that you've um, check the drop down that you will be communicating with all attendees uh, or panelists and attendees. So make sure that that is selected and go ahead right now, share what city you are in right now and your role. So invite everybody to just take a look, see who is quote unquote around this round table. I don't know how large a physical round table of now 56 people would need to be, but I'm pretty sure it would be pretty physically large. I, I don't know the math myself, but it would be quite a large, you know, if you imagine 55 slices on a pizza of a round table. But it's great to see where you are, uh, what it is that you do, and this is a chance because we know, we know, Rebecca and I know who you all are, but we want you to have a chance to, you know, get a, get a quick, quick view, quick snapshot of who is here. Nice. It's a very large round table with a very good point. Thank you. It's a very large physical round table with six feet social distancing. Awesome. Oh, it's great to see Parka. I, I am a regular uh, contributor to Parka. Awesome to see folks here. It's a lot of familiar names and faces. We're glad you're here to support and attend. 
really looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say in terms of um, what your reopen plans are. I'm glad that you're also curious about each other. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Keep it going um, as, as we continue on and as more people jump on. So a few, just to get us oriented as a group to what we will be doing. Um, again, uh, you know, we're still kind of orienting ourselves to how to hold a round table via Zoom. Uh, but what we wanted to make sure you knew is like, this is a, this is a safe space to be honest with your plans and, and really even have folks not even know who you are, if that is important to you and in, in sharing honestly. So when we do do our polls, uh, anonymity is enabled in all of our polls. So even when we were run reports, I, you know, the folks here, we won't even know who answered um, which response. And then also another option in our polls is if there is a response that you have to a poll that isn't reflected in the choices that we offered, um, what Rebecca will be doing is she'll be, um, she will be, typing that, sh that question in the chat so that people, you can say in your own words what your response is. Again, we have about 80 registrants here, 74, 75 different employers. And what we wanted to do is really take a group photo. What is the group photo? What does it look like when we all talk about our reopen plans in the aggregate? And, and really what is the most efficient way to gather all that data without having everybody you know, speak one by one by one? Um, and lastly, again, um, in, in the spirit of sharing, we're going to close our, the, the second half of our roundtable will be devoted to discussion. So we have pretty open-ended discussions. We didn't want to make any assumptions as to what would, um, what the information would tell you and what would come up for you. So we have some, a couple open-ended discussion questions to get us kicked off and, and we'll be telling you the protocols on those and, and how we manage that uh, once we get there. Great. So we're going to do our first poll. So the next two polls, uh, I'd like you to answer as an individual. So I'm going to launch this first poll. Where will you be once restrictions lift? So again, re respond as yourself. Um, will you be at home full time? Will you be more at home than on site? More on site than at home? Uh, on site full time or that you don't know yet? So I'll give you a few moments about halfway through the poll now. Give everybody a chance to respond. So we have a response in the chat as well. We'll take keep that in uh, take that into account. I'm almost finished. So I'm gonna, oh, a couple more coming in. If you have not yet responded, please do so now. I will close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. And this is where we are. So, um, it doesn't look like a lot of us will be uh, on site full time. It looks like then a, a pretty uh, a spread between the other options of being mostly at home, more at home than on site about, you know, there's um, some doing a lot of folks in a split situation and um, a, a good number, about a quarter of people don't know yet. So thank you. Okay. So then the next poll, we have another one for you to answer individually is which, which of these best describes your sentiment either about being at work if you already are or returning to work if uh, you anticipate returning um, when, when things begin to ease up and open. So there's comfortable, eager, ambivalent, anxious, loss, dread. Um, if you have your own response, a, a, a sentiment that we did not <laughs> include there, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'm posting the question in the chat right now. 
Okay, still have responses coming in. Thank you for your patience. Still a few more coming in. Okay, if you haven't, please respond now if you haven't already. And I will be closing this poll and have you take a look at the results. So um, about 42% is, is um, the biggest bucket, anxious. And you can take a look at what are the other sentiments out there? about a return to work. And we'll talk about um, sentiments playing a role in reopening a little later in the call. It's one of the points we touch on. Great, thank you. Okay. So next, um, I wanted to kind of kick us off by talking about, you know, how did commute.org start this conversation anyway? Why, why did we want to hold a round table? Well, I think, um, you know, how does the commute factor into our reopen plan is, is, is a big chunk of, of the equation. There's a lot of variables I'm sure your various workplaces are considering and, and every workplace has its own algorithm considerations. And, and for us, we were kind of looking at our region and, you know, the, the first thing that we were thinking is, will there be a congested commute when there is a reopen if folks are reticent to return to any sort of shared form of transit uh, because of distancing we this was obviously one of the concerns that we had at, at our agency and that um you know we put together some considerations that you know if the the tagline of it would be that wherever possible you know continue to telework if if the the person, the staff member, the team members function can be carried out at home. Um, and that these, these were the considerations that we took into account. We know that all, all employers have many other considerations, um, including the commute, but that, um, you know, because we're dealing with kind of this whole new formula way of being that involves distancing, I think, I think, um, uh, Jarvis, a person who said, you know, we need to make a whole new calculation about how big an actual round table would need to be if six feet were the, were the new assumption. So this was, was also now, you know, what is uh, uh, the new calculation of, of a right mix of a commute that would have things going, going, flowing smoothly, um, but also keep folks safe as they, as they return to work. So next is uh, obviously the consideration is can um, the work site itself be adapted uh, to safely distance or protect employees? And if, if you're finding that, that it's actually really tough to do so and that the people can carry out their function um, remotely or at home, that that is also uh, a, a good place to you know, keep, keep folks teleworking which I don't think is, is news to anybody in, in this room. The other reason that we thought of too, and, and that you know, we've seen in, um, in other samples of reopening plan is really taking into account what are underlying health conditions that place certain employees at higher risk of a severe infection should they contract the virus anywhere. And um, you know, it, for me, when I saw this, it was like, you know, why are, are we going through all of this care and trouble is, is really to prevent this situation, is that somebody does have an underlying health condition that puts them in a place that, you know, they, they might be at higher risk to have a severe infection. And, um, it, you know, there, there are probably um, legal and HR conversations to be had around this about uh, privacy and disclosure, uh, HIPAA considerations, also advising employees to talk to their own health provider about what they recommend and if there are accommodations or any sort of uh, switching up in the location or, or the nature of that person's role um, to, to kind of put, put these concerns uh, at ease. Then the last one that we thought, you know, is, is now that we know that we are playing in a playing field of safe distancing is that there are 
there is a, a group of folks for whom there is no job to be done unless they must, they must have a physical presence at work. Um, that is their function, things that have to do with a tangible, you know, production movement of product or maintenance of equipment. If, if that is their role, then there, there really is no, uh, you know, sense of remote work. <laughs> um, that, that can be done here. And, and that these folks, as restrictions ease, you know, the essential workers are already modeling this, and that as restrictions ease, the, the number of on-site workers will, will rise to what degree, uh, at, at what times, at what density, we, we don't know yet. But th these numbers will rise, and that, you know, from what we can observe right now, even at commute.org, even from seeing, you know, the commuters that still use our programs, is even though it's to a much lesser number, people still are riding public transit, people are still doing carpools, vans. all the modes are actually still in use, but not at their, you know, quote unquote, pre-COVID pre numbers, and to, to expect a rise in this. And so, you know, again, wherever possible, and, and that will have to be, that degree is decided upon by each employer, depending on their needs, uh, that can telework should continue to do so, so that the people who must have a physical presence, not just kind of a nice to have physical presence, but must have a physical presence in order to even carry out their function, uh, can do so safely during their commute as well, that they have, you know, that we have clear roads, um, you know, there might be insufficient parking depending on where people are going to, and that safe distancing is maintained to the best um, of its, the, but the best it can be when we're talking about public transit and shared transit. Um, because you know, to, in order for the economy to keep moving, more people will will need to return to work, um, and and we want to keep that as spacious as possible. Great. So I wanted to give us a sense of who uh, at least registered for this webinar. Right now, we have about sixty one people on this call, and um, again, this data reflects the eighty of you that registered and your responses. Um, I also took up some duplicates because I know there are a few folks from the same employer, so I also took that into account. But here's just so you can see where uh, everybody's uh, from. And naturally with our audiences, commute.org being a San Mateo County agency, um, we see a lot of representation, in South San Francisco, Redwood City, uh, employers in San Francisco and uh, San Mateo. And then as you can see, various representation from other Bay Area counties, um, a few other uh, smaller pockets, other cities in San Mateo County, and some outside the Bay Area as well. Next, uh, by industry, and we think this is also very important too, is um, this is who is in the room, and this, uh, to what degree it is or isn't an actual representation of our region's mix of industries and proportions. Uh, we want you to remember that as we as we go through uh, people's responses about who is and isn't teleworking. So again, lots of representation in the biotech medical and pharmaceutical industries, transportation, government, and then a few other um, industries as well. But I, I, I actually wouldn't say that this is representative of what the region um, actually is. The next, what were, your, what were folks' actual responses? in terms of uh, people making estimates. What percentage of your workplace will continue to telework when, um, when you know, restrictions ease or we reopen? So you can take a look at, at what the spread was. And uh, again, we see it a little heavier in anything under 40%, but, but actually not, not by huge vast amounts. Um, so that there is a, a, a sizable spread in each of the categories. Um, but what we did do is let's uh, take this into account by employer size. So if we were to pretend um, everybody in this room uh, were a, a population and a population of employers, we took your employer size and weighted it uh, by how big you were. And so um, my disclaimer for that though, is that Zoom's uh, drop down categories are also pretty vast. So this is not by an exact count of your employees. So I don't want to attempt offend any data analysts that might be on the call. But to the best that we could, um, we took all these percentages, weighted you by employer size, and what it told us is if we took the population of all of our workplaces, 
45% um, of all the employees represented by the people in this room would still be teleworking and that 55% would, would be returning in some form or another. Um, I think when I looked at, at this number, um, you know, if we were to compare pre-COVID times, no pandemic, our actual telework percentage, you know, depending on which, num which study you're looking at, it can hover between anywhere six, eight, ten percent at best in terms of what is our average non-pandemic telework number. So what that tells me is this is significant. What it also does not tell me is the 55% that is not teleworking, what we don't know is how these people will be getting to work and in what form and by what mode and in what fashion, you know, what time of day they're going. So, but what, what it does tell us is a pretty significant amount of people are still gonna be teleworking. Um, Rebecca, I'm gonna ask you, Rebecca found this awesome article that has data from a similar study of Bay Area CEOs and they, they have some different numbers um, obviously not represented um, exactly, you know, probably different companies and, and we don't know kind of the context that they have there, but it also gives some um, insight into uh, what we've done is we've, we've just said a reopen, but they've actually cut it by phase two, phase three, phase four, um, and how, how this will look like gradually. So you're welcome to take a look at those numbers too. And again, you know, context is everything. <laughs> I just posted it in the chat. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, so uh, we're going to start talking about our own workplaces soon. Um, again, another starting point that we were thinking is what do we hear on the street? You know, the news is going so quickly across all of our smartphones, our screens. Uh, we hear anecdotes from our own circles. So what it is, um, what is it that we are hearing out in the ether? Uh, one is obviously the, the, how people are reconfiguring physical work sites. So what, how floor plans, barriers, or, or floor markers are being placed for distancing or protection. Uh, the keep calm and telework on, I added, because last week we heard from, um, or last couple weeks, we heard from a lot of, um, you know, the Google, Facebook, and then last week Twitter said people can work indefinitely. So these employers have made the call to extend telework for various lengths of time. Um, we've also heard that folks are taking some care to see what employee perception is. So that's kind of how we wanted to kick you all off is what is your perception of, um, of returning to work or being at work at all and how that plays a role either in morale or productivity or just even the, just the business continuity. Um, of your operations. And lastly, we also heard, you know, a kind of wait and see, you know, what will early returners, what, what will they face, whether it is, is it um, our new configurations, uh, do they impede any operations? Do they just, you know, can things go on as they did under new configurations or uh, just even waiting to see what the spread numbers end up being within any one employer. I think what we have seen in the essential workers is that there are some employers that are and aren't hotspots, what care they have or haven't taken in terms of offering um, or in terms of mitigating distance and protection. And um, again, it's kind of a wait and see. Some employers might be doing this in a phase within and of themselves. So certain parts of your companies may be going in first and then kind of waiting to see how, how large or how much you scale forward or scale back or reopen. So next, what we're gonna do is a series of polls um, about what, what will be the word on the street in this room. So uh, again, this is a tool, the polling is a tool to uh, efficiently get a lot of information from a lot of people quickly. And I, I wanted to take a moment to have, have you first, before we jump into the polls, uh, reflect on what is your own visceral internal reaction when you see poll results? Because the other thing I wanted to remind people of is this is not a vote. You know, this isn't, in, you know, this isn't any uh, reinforcement of a should or a shouldn't, or you know, what is your reaction to seeing what is the majority sentiment and, and how that might influence you and your potential decision-making. So just, you know, I think the, the, my 
invitation is to just just check yourself on how you react to a poll and if if information that you do see in a poll is telling or moving or informative to you awesome if it's simply data and you wanted to see what people are doing on mass um, then take it just as that okay so let's get started um, we'll we'll take that same you know keep calm and telework on and see what how true that is or isn't with this group so I'm going to launch this poll. How long will your workplace uh, continue teleworking for those who can? So begin. Uh, take it. Take your time reading the options. You know, there's there's different lengths of time included here, uh, to the fullest degree that the government will allow. You will return. Uh, you'll continue through the summer, the fall, through the end of the year, uh, beyond 2020 or don't know yet, that decision has not been made at your workplace. Still some results coming in. Okay. Please make your, or please submit your response if you haven't already. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. And here are the results. So it looks like quite a few of you don't know yet, almost half. Um, otherwise, uh, we will be returning to the fullest degree that government guidelines will allow. Um, and also, you know, actually a good amount saying beyond 2020. So, uh, you know, different ends of the extremes. Great, thank you. Okay, next poll. What is included in your reopen plans? Launch this poll. Uh, so things that we, we already mentioned in terms of word on the street, reconfigured floor plans. And here you can you know, check all that apply. It's a multiple choice. Um, reconfigured floor plans, new sanitation protocols, new protocols of how to behave in a shared space. Uh, new procedures for any shared transit that you offer, continue telework where appropriate, staggering the scheduled, partial staffing, providing or requiring protection wherever that is appropriate, uh, having an orientation or training for the new protocols on site as people get returned and reoriented or that you don't know yet. So there's quite a bit of activity in this poll. So I'm gonna keep it open. Um, you know, people probably have to kind of go through your own mental checklist as you fill this one out. And again, if there's actually something that was pretty significant in your plan that we did not include, uh, this is your cue, uh, Rebecca posted it in the chat. Um, something that we missed, please, please feel free to put it in the chat box. Still a little coming in, starting to slow down. Give it a few more seconds, please submit your response. Okay, I'm gonna end this poll now. And here are the results. Let's take a look. A lot of new cleaning procedures, as well as uh, providing or requiring protection. Just, you know, scroll up and down to take a look and, and see. Yes, I do see that question. I think that is probably, uh, the question in the chat is curious about new shared commute guidelines and do they exist anywhere? So yeah, that's a great question. And I think um, let's, let's revisit that when we get to the open-ended discussion questions. Cause I think, <laughs> I, th I think you're thinking the way we're thinking and, and that's probably gonna be the conversations after this one. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it looks like everybody's doing a little bit of, of everything. Um, uh, the folks, so it's either the smallest bucket would be the things about shared transit. 
um, and also not knowing yet. Great, thank you. Next question. So actually, let's take that question. What's included in your transportation reopen plans? Um, anything that you are considering? Let me launch that poll. So if you are making adaptations uh, to your commute programs in a reopen, whether that is to parking procedures, carpool, van pools, walking and biking, public transit, telework, and, and not knowing yet. Or if there's something else that uh, your team has come up with that, that we didn't include here again, you can post to put it in the chat. Yeah, and then so uh, John put in the chat that uh, that different protocols apply for telecommuting option for office workers, and then the folks who are in outside sales have a different set of protocols. Um, question about shuttles. Um, yeah, so if there's actually anything that that folks wanted to say, um, I think for us, yeah, you know, there is a, a what is it? putting public transit or van pool, car pool, the other shared transit option is putting in shuttles there. So if you have any folks who are doing anything with shuttles, please feel free to share that in the chat. Yeah, one thing commute.org is doing with their shuttles, or they're taking, um, they're ramping up their uh, sanit sanitation after every, you know, after each route, they'll, the drivers will clean. And they're also protecting the, you know, with some like anti, uh, help me out here, Virda, if you remember what that is called for the handrails. Oh, safe handles. Yeah, safe we, handles. Can, we can chat about these procedures in a bit. I think with any sort of shared transit, especially things like shuttles or, or even anything larger than that, I think the wild card is for right now, things can remain spacious because things have um, basically reduced in, in the numbers of 80 or 90% um, drop in ridership. So things are able to remain spacious and, and the wild card that we're dealing with is when numbers go up, can, can that safety protocol still apply and, and what to do um, as numbers go up. So I'm gonna close this poll and share the results and folks can take a, work, take a look. Um, the, I think the results reflect also what we had in our registrant data is about half have um, are still continuing to telework and um, a good number of folks don't know yet. Um, and I think that that probably lends itself to what I just said is, is we don't know the numbers of, or the people who are returning, the, the, the sizable amount of people that are returning, we don't know how and, and what choices people will make um, when at, as things ease in a phased way. Um, biking and walking and public transit seem to have a similar share of the responses followed by carpool, van pool, and then um, some changes to parking protocol. Let's see if there's anything else in the chat. Um, some telecommuting allowed to reduce shared transit for employees who rely on this option. Those who drive themselves to work to have more flexibility. Yes. Um, that, yeah, exactly. And that, that was kind of to, to the point that we made earlier too, is um, the more folks who can telework at home will keep shared transit um, spacious and clear. And, and again, like, like it says here, have more flexibility. Um, okay, great. We have another question for the discussion later. And the next poll is you know how did folks come to all of these planning decisions so i'm going to launch the next poll and i think you know we decided to ask this one because um you know we wanted to know what is important to employers as you make these decisions there, there's just always so much to be considered and and really take your time with this question there's no rush on this poll but there's so much to be considered i'm sure all of the things that we listed here have have made their way into your conversations, but that when it really came down to making the call of what to offer, how to adapt, 
you know, what was it that really was a deal breaker um, in your conversations? What really stood out as super important to you as an employer? Um, because we're all dealing with different circumstances that it, it's important to us to know what is important to you. Um, so the options that we have here, government restrictions and guidelines as a consideration, whether you had the capacity or ability to transport your employees safely to work, whether the work site itself had the capacity and ability to maintain distances and protection, um, how much employee perception of returning or being at work uh, played into your decision making. Uh, what, what is happening in the medical science world, you know, is, is the fact that uh, we're trying to up testing, tracing, and eventually treatments and vaccines. Does that play a role in your decision making and how you phase in um, different operations? Or whether it is, you know, the economic reality of your business is that the business uh, um, to survive and continue um, was really also uh, a big player in your decision. Um, if you have not made the decisions yet, that is also an option. And if there's other factors that came into your conversations that really stood out as, you know, what, what did your planning boil down to? So I see um, still some folks responding and considering. We, we knew that this, this would probably be the, lo the longest of our polls because it, it, it takes some discernment on your part. It takes some reflection on your part, looking back on your process. Um, so again, take your time. I'm gonna, you know, it's okay to sit with the silence. Uh, for some of you, there's some, some activity going on in the chat. So, it is a very extremely complicated question to answer, and this would be our first attempt at answering it in a straightforward manner. But, you know, we'll see what the results can, can tell us in a very snapshot, if not crude, uh, way en masse. Um, and another response is a combination of planning for the school year, but minimizing risk since mass transit may not be an option, at least for the first six months post phase three and four. Thank you. Okay, I think the activity in the poll has slowed down, so I'm gonna end the poll. And share results. So it looks like uh, people are leading, or some a good number of folks are leading with government restrictions, um, followed by employee perception, um, and then ability to safely distance and protect on site, and followed by others, continuity of the business and transportation. So just take a look at that, take in the results. And this is where uh, I would invite folks, you know, having seen this, whatever meaning you may or may not be taking from it, um, the idea for us was for you to see, you know, what, what else is happening out there? I'm sure a lot of conversations are, have been pretty, you know, internal to workplaces with some kind of polling of, you know, what's, what's the employer next door doing? Um, or employers that are kind of already in your circle. And, um, you know, with this, we wanted to create a space in the spirit of sharing, you know, uh, again, why at the top of the call, we said that your participation would be really important. Uh, after this, we're gonna start um, t doing open discussion. So we're gonna ask what has been um, most helpful in your planning process. So our discussion protocols here, um, there are a couple ways that you can share. If, if there are things that really were helpful to your planning process, that's a really simple share. It's a resource. It's just something here. I wanna put this out there um, that you can share easily in the chat. Go ahead and do that in the chat. But if there's something that just lends itself to verbal expression, um, that's easier for you to describe verbally, we're gonna ask you to raise your hand. and. This is where, you know, uh, the technology, we're, we're gonna answer um, folks in the order in which we see your hands go up. 
And um, again, really what was helpful to you, what you feel like, you know, this really served us in getting to our plan and that I feel like, you know, I just want to offer it to a group of employers. Should they still, you know, especially because a number of folks, it seems like, um, it seems like a, a good split in this group, about 50-50 do know their plans. And some of them, um, obviously, ha based on the, the, the polling here, haven't decided yet. So um, I think what's really beneficial, even for those of you who do have your plans, is to just hear what it was like for other people. So I'd invite you to do that now, is to share any ideas, processes, toolkits, resources, just anything that was just like a really great breaking point in your planning in the chat. If you have something that you'd like to verbally share, um, please raise your hand and we'll, we'll call on you and unmute you and have you share in the room. And, um, and, then, and then we have a, another question to the other effect that I think have, have represented some of the questions that were in the chat is, you know, what about this and what about that? Um, but for right now, I think, you know, what we really wanted to do is, is open the floor to what might be helpful to other people in the room. I don't see any hands right now and I don't see much in the chat. So it does make me wonder what was helpful or was it just kind of a struggle of a process overall? But it does seem like, you know, some of you, you know, I would say don't underestimate what you did and how you came to certain decisions. Um, let's see, who do we have? Okay, John Ebert, I'm gonna put you live now and you are unmuted, go ahead. Oops, I believe you're unmuted. Yeah, I'm should be unmuted. Maybe John can try to unmute himself. John, are you able to unmute yourself? We have, we have you on talking permitted. Oh, I guess I have unmuted myself. Awesome. Go ahead. All right. Uh, well, one thing we took, because our, our, our factory is based in China, what we did do is we took a protocol from what they did, where hmm. uh, every employee who comes in, uh, we, have a te we have these temperature scanners. Hmm. We, we, check, we, we, we check our employees, you know, when they do come to the, to the office, check for their temperature, have them fill in a sheet to make sure they're, you know, are they sick? Are, you know, they feel sick, do they not, not feel well? If they don't feel well, go straight home. Um, and we, we already have that in protocol because uh, we have some people coming to the office. Uh, not everyone is, but those okay. who come to the office, that's a standard procedure that we, 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 we've adopted at the office right now. So I, I don't know whether that, that kind of helps, whether just to have a simple temperature scanner, check everyone coming in the morning, check mm -hmm. them when they leave, and you know, just 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 keep your your, your documentation just to, to to track who's coming in and who's going. Great. W would you say is there anything that you want to share? If there is any resistance or barriers to that, either in terms of making that decision or how employees received? No, actually, they were um, they have they have no objection to it. I, I guess they okay. understood that it's also for their welfare. Mm. We're not doing it just because you know we have nothing better to do. Uh, that's one thing that we discuss with our mm -hmm. employees. You know, taking a um, um, taking an, an example from our factory, which obviously in China went through a, a, a great deal of regard that mm. problems. And over there, the, the tolerance is zero tolerance. If the factory of 300 people or 1,000 people, even one person has COVID, they shut down the entire plant. Mm -hmm. So there's a zero tolerance over there. Okay. Here, it's not quite that, but we decided that it seemed to be a good thing to just check people as they came in. And I think our employees feel that uh, you know, their welfare is taken into, into account and they're actually more, more, more uh, willing to come, you know, come, you know, not telecommute. They're, they're actually willing to come to the office, you know, on, 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 on agreed dates. Okay. Great, thank you. And um, the next, uh, this isn't a name, but it's a phone number, 415-990. Uh, We're gonna allow you to talk. That person still there? What's the number? Um, I th think. Let's see. Looks like we lost a call in. 
Okay. Okay, so I think that person has lowered their hand. All right, so we have some comments in the chat. Um, have an active ride share incentive that includes telecommuting. Um, imagine that many will not want to take mass transit to work and what can I do to encourage employees to carpool or vanpool? Uh, next, we have reviewed shelter in place orders for each county where we operate, varied a bit for a while. Um, hosted several calls with peer institutions to share ideas. So similar to, to this call is, is already sharing within your networks, great. So it sounds like there, there was a combination of government and then like also reaching out. Um, so yeah, the, the next one is for those that carpool and vanpool, should we simply encourage washing hands, wearing masks during commute? So yeah, I mean, I think um, the carpool and vanpool question has come up a lot. And I think, you know, who, the, the question just actually is, who is the body that puts out protocols for safe and um, for safe carpooling and van pooling, whether it is an app that enables it. Um, we did see, uh, I think, you know, maybe 10 days ago, Lyft, which isn't carpool or van pool, but Lyft had a checklist that was an encouragement of procedures. Um, we don't have anything official ourselves coming from commute.org, but we are, you know, taking close look at what um, folks who are enabling carpooling. Um, so encouraging wash hands, wearing masks during a commute. Um, some folks have said things about air ventilation, opening a window, where to sit in the car. So prior to this, I think the best practice was to sit in the front seat, which I think is now being changed to sit farther from the driver. The next comment is uh, conducted and planned internal workshops with our team to help plan for the recovery of parking management and TDM programs. So things are in process. We are also looking at transitioning to daily parking. So that, that's, uh, I think there was a question um, earlier about what, what was being done to adapt parking. So here's a, an, an adaptation to cost structure, daily parking, shifting to daily. Um, okay, uh, Jessica says with my kids and it's lunchtime, um, and listened to a ton of webinars focused on transportation and commute and also participated in a number of roundtable discussions. So it looks like sharing is, is helpful, hearing a ton of ideas, um, coordinating with your organization's leadership. And of, of course, organizations of varying sizes have different sizes of leadership teams. Um, are people concerned about privacy issues? employees might be very resistant to divulging that they have a health condition. Yeah, so that's what I was uh, alluding to earlier is HIPAA concerns and privacy and disclosure and whether or not, um, now it is, it is a case where revealing could either help or hinder um, the ability to make an accommodation. So, I, and I'm sure there's probably another sort of like example of disclosing um, a health condition as it relates to the work site. So, I'm, you know, I, I think it may exist somewhere within an HR or a legal team about what is the best practice around that. Um, I think I, 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 what I always hear another default is have, have that person also talk to their healthcare provider about the degree of risk. Um, next is regarding commuter transportation, a major factor is whether or not social distancing can reasonably be maintained. That is very correct. I think, you know, like, again, it's, it's a calculation of space and number of people. Um, and, and that is like mathematical and physical number. And what, what do we do if the number of people wanting to take shared transit or even be in a facility together is, is now a different number? Um, and if, if, you know, what, what we all would hope is that there is a sweet spot in which the number teleworking, staying at home would just magically allow for a spacious and safe commute. But again, at this point in time, maybe if we were to convene again in one month, we would have actual data to help inform what choice, what commute choices people are. And I think at this point, you know, everybody has done their planning and 
visited, like, you know, joined all the webinars and shared conversations and says, you know, we're making our best estimation at this time. And um, once a reopen happens, it's kind of, you know, let's see how people are making their choices um, in terms of how to get to work. Um, from David Sorrell, pop, proper coordination with all important members of the organization is critical. Internally, you can play a proactive role. Dale, I say, ask forgiveness later. <laughs> very, very honest and forthright. Thank you, David. And have the protocols in policy and programming. So I think, I think if I were to just kind of like read into the essence of that comment is be bold and, and have a conversation with your teams. Um, and, and you know, you may or may not need forgiveness later. Um, carpools and van pools minimize, but doesn't zero out risk compared to mass transit. Good point, thank you. A few more comments coming in regarding the ride sharing. Consider also putting all belongings in the trunk, except for the stuff. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, it's all the stuff that you need during the ride. Um, agree, Jane, State of Oregon and release guidelines for three feet distance on transit and face covering. Company should engage with transit, transit agencies when the transit agencies plan on reducing services now or in the future. Has any, that, that brings up a, a question that I had too, is um, if, if any employers have had those conversations directly with transit agencies as an employer. So if, if you have a response to that, feel free to raise your hand. You can type it in the chat. But that I think that's a, a great question and point, David. Um, back to the HIPAA issue. How can an employer protect all its employees working on site if privacy laws prevent employer knowing if one particular employee is potentially sick? Surely this is not being authoritarian but altruistic for the majority. It is not like an employer is going to terminate a sick employee. Um, and I think, you know, in, in regards to the question, I think it, you know, probably about revealing a health condition. I think it's, it's also potentially, I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, um, but also, you know, the thing about revealing is, is if people are asked, for example, to take temperature, that is also revealing something about health as well. Um, so I think there are lots of lines that um, in pre-COVID times would, would we consider stepping over lines and in COVID times there are new lines being drawn literally <laughs> um, that I see at my grocery store with tape on the floor. <laughs> um, so I, I think these are all very valid questions is, and um, I, I, my guess is that we have yet to know what is an answer that works for any one particular place, but all really, really great points that are being raised. I hear that um, David mm -hmm. Sorrell has his hand raised and maybe oh. he'll want to. Go ahead, David. Oh, thank you very much. And so, so I just wanted to follow up on that statement um, because I've looked at, uh, so our university, Cal, currently has, is participating in our employer pass program. And then my students, they just passed their ballot measure um, to expand their transit passes for uh, the next three years. The one thing that we're looking at is basically um, the lack of, uh, or rather whether or not a, the university has to pay the difference um, for lost revenues or the fact that no one's writing it. The second thing is that uh, looking at both uh, BART and possibly AC Transit for fiscal year 21, um, there are, they are talking about uh, some level of like service adjustments. In the case of BART, um, post-COVID, uh, you know, life, uh, if you want to call it, they will probably look at maintaining 30 minute headways with the uh, possible discussion of going back up to 15 minutes. Um, and then also with AC Transit, once everything goes back to normal, about a year from now, they'll be looking at reducing service to about 80% full strength. Um, and so it's kind of important that, you know, for, for the one thing with employers is to continue to kind of work with the agencies um, that are planning on any service adjustments, uh, any reductions of service, because one lifeline, uh, if you lose the lifeline, what happens is that, you know, those folks are going to be left out in the cold. And so we should be cognizant that, you know, 
from a transit agency perspective that to engage with us and then vice versa, knowing that, you know, losing service will result in massive uh, shifts of what employees are going to do specifically. Great, thank you, David. And thank you for the insight of, of what's going on, the word on the street for you and your particular situation and um, for shedding light on, on some of the earlier questions. Um, it, we're almost at time, so I wanted to reflect back some of what uh, we've been hearing as themes and, and you know, potential of, of where to go next. So I hear a theme about you know, what are safe carpool and van pool protocols um, similarly, also with how mass transit is shifting, I mean, in terms of the mass transit, public transit is right now, it, it is spacious. Will it continue to be spacious and to what degree if it cannot be? That is, that is the huge question. Um, and then also what it, the conversation of connecting employers and, and people with, with the actual transit, transit agencies um, was also a big question. And then also um, a, a theme around privacy and disclosure, and you know what 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 folks are are now maybe not previously willing to do, but pre now willing to do um, for kind of their own benefit at the work site. You know whether it's uh, revealing a health condition or um, having your temperature taken when you get to the door. So all very valid questions. I think this gives us great um, understanding. Um, that I think everybody kind of went to our last question anyway, which is what is top of mind. And those were the responses that we got. And we will be sharing these um, data points back to this group um, in a follow-up email. And the last thing is we're curious about what is the fate of long-term telework? So if this is also a compelling question to you, uh, we're gonna put a link to our survey for it in the chat. And we invite you to take the survey. If you're also curious as to what is the potential of telework both for you know this year and going forward beyond the pandemic and how those two situations are different um, we'd love to hear from you um, so i think we are just about at time so thank you so much everybody for your participation really rich conversation um, i know we all, we got as far which was our goal is to really raise issues rather than close them off and decide i i don't you know, this wasn't a place to decide anything, but just really hear what is on mass a group of people trying to do together and what how this might inform um, Give us a glimpse of, of what's to come and uh, we hope to continue the conversation. So please stay in touch with us. Um, please be on the lookout for uh, future uh, either similar webinars or roundtable type offerings and um, yeah, we, we really appreciate your input and all the questions and it just shows all the concern that we're all putting into how to do this all together and for all of us to both be thriving or, you know, uh, thriving businesses, companies, but also be safe in the process and how we can help each other out. So thank you very much. Um, you know, have a, a wonderful rest of your week and uh, safe planning and uh, hope that anything that was shared here is helpful to those of you who are still uh, in the planning process. So thank you. We'll be on a little bit, but if you, if you uh, need to hop off, hop off, but thank you very much for your participation.